What's up, you guys? It's Matt here. So right now, at the time of recording this video, XRP is running a little bit. You know, people were complaining about the fact that it stands still. And honestly, it's still, even though it is running a little bit, it still does stand still um, at around, let's say, the 50 to 70 cent mark, right? It hasn't really moved too much from there. But we're seeing it move at the time of recording this, which is 8.30 a.m. But that's not what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is more towards the the major questions that are being asked and kind of reference um, or kind of pin myself to one of those questions. A lot of people will have the question of whether we'll get to certain prices, whether we'll get to $10, um, $100, $1,000, $10,000, $30,000, $100,000, right? Those are the questions that we have here. And honestly, we don't truly know the answer to that. We don't know if it will get to a level of uh, $100. We don't know if it will get to a level of $1,000. We're all speculating because of all the different things that come with it. <clears throat> um, but another question that we uh, definitely get asked um, is all about the escrow, is all about the supply that's left on the table. And that's a big one because as you see any type of dilution, it does limit the amount that you can get to, right? The price that you can get to, not the market cap, because the market cap could be the same, but the price level might not be what we expect because you have doubled the supply that's out there. So this is the question that I really want to talk about. Um, and the reason why I want to focus on this is because maybe people don't truly understand what could happen, what it could be, and also what uh, XRP's um, uh, position is standing at uh, by nature, what it actually does by nature, whether it's inflationary or deflationary. So guys, if you could, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell for more of these videos. Also, make sure you check out any of the links that are down below. It does help out the channel. And if you guys want to follow me on Twitter, follow me on Patreon, those links are in the description. Don't forget about my link for Margex. I have a link down there where you guys can trade up to 100x leverage, up to 50x leverage on XRP. Um, you can trade as little as 5x leverage um, and get yourself started and you know utilize other people's money to make yourself money. I mean, I've been having success with it, and I hope that you guys can find a way to have success with it as well. Now, like I said, uh, at the time of recording this video, which is 8.32 a.m. at the moment, um, we are up about 5%. We're up to a 63 or 64 uh, cent price right now. And you can see the amount that I have that's in there is $22,705.36, which I think needs to be adjusted because I did add a little bit more XRP to it from Margex. So um, I think that needs to be adjusted. But either way, I have a lot of XRP. Uh, if we look at the uh, market cap, it's at a $35 billion market cap again, which is great. And we're also seeing a uh, $2.3 billion volume day, which is fantastic. Brings us up to about a 6.5% uh, percent volume to market cap ratio, which we typically don't see within these plays. Look at this movement that we are seeing as of right now from this low level here of 60 cents all the way up to about 64 and a half cents. And right now it's sitting at about 63 um, almost 64 cents, again, up uh, 5% on the day. So the movement has been great, especially after people said, hey, why is it so flat? The overall market, um, the overall market is kind of down. So to see XRP even moving in a positive way is fantastic. Um, and they were also asking like, um, why is it not moving? Because we have all this hype and all this attention, all this popularity behind XRP. We should see some movement and they're not wrong, we should. But it's the uncertainty that really uh, leads into that. But let's get into the question at hand, which really hovers around the circulating supply, the total supply. <clears throat> I think when people look at this supply, even the SEC, you look at the supply, you think dilution. You think that, uh, you know, Ripple is taking advantage of, you know, the holders. And I hear that so much where they're like, um, Ripple is just going to release all the supply and they're going to screw everybody over and the price is going to drop and it's going to be a rug pull and all of that. Um, I see this so many times in my comment section. I can literally search over on YouTube and see how many people talk about the dilution, talk about the supply and how much they're going to add. Um, and while it is true, they can add as much supply as they want. They've said that they're only going to add about 1 billion per month, which honestly is not a crazy impact with the amount of volume that goes through on a daily basis. Um, in the form of multiple billions, uh, tens of billions, maybe even hundreds of billions at times 
in XRP that can go through in volume. It's not really gonna be an impact to see 1 billion happen within the month when you see hundreds of billions of coins that are being traded um, during that month. Uh, 1 billion coins is not gonna have an impact. However, it does have an impact on the ceiling, right? The price ceiling. If we see a max uh, price of, let's say it is $10, right? Max price at $10, um, um, or let's just say a max price or a max market cap of $1 trillion. Uh, $1 trillion would mean that we get to a $10 price point. And if we still saw that max market cap at $1 trillion with 100, uh, 100 billion coins, so 100 billion coins would be $10. However, with the current stage, it would be $20 at a, at a $1 billion or $1 trillion market cap. So if we had our current prices, let me clear that up a little bit. I felt like I was a little bit all over the place. But if we have the current supply, at a $1 trillion market cap, it would be a $20 price. If we had the extended supply of 100 billion coins with a, 10, with a uh, $1 trillion uh, market cap, we would be looking at a $10 price. So it would decrease it by half, right? Um, meaning that you wouldn't be as valuable in the end if you saw more coins that are uh, you know, launched or out there. Um, However, if XRP is truly what it's going to be, then that really doesn't matter. Market cap, honestly, doesn't truly matter. And that's not the cap. It's more about what it's worth and what people are using it for and how much is out there, the scarcity, all of that stuff that really leads into that. Um, but the point I'm trying to make is that if you have more supply, it is going to potentially decrease that price ceiling. So what's really the information behind it? So they're looking to release 1 billion coins per month. And um, that's the way that we uh, we see that there. And that's going to create maybe a little bit of dilution. However, I think the SEC kind of has a problem with them having ownership of that much and having the ability to sell that much, uh, kind of uh, diluting a lot of the uh, investors a part of it. And also if they were looking to be a part of it, they would also get diluted. And I think that's where kind of this lawsuit does kind of stem from. If they can get a handle on that uh, escrow, whether they own the escrow or they burn the escrow, now the government can truly make an investment into XRP without being diluted by the parent company. So that's kind of where I see that happening. So throughout this case, we could honestly see the escrow, um, which would be a bad thing, uh, have any type of government control over it, which I don't think it would be the case. Um, or we could have the escrow completely burned off and have no control. Nobody has control over what's left there. And we're only looking at a 55 billion coin supply or 60 billion coin supply, whatever we're at at the time of, um, you know, the full settlement truly happening. Um, but the point I want to make within this video, and I know it may be um, a lot to get to this, is more about what XRP truly is. XRP is truly a deflationary cryptocurrency by nature, right? It is something that decreases supply by transactions. So we see these transactions that are happening, the supply overall decreases. Now it's not something that's a massive uh, supply change, um, but you see that you have billions, that, or sorry, millions that have been burned off. And seeing those millions that have been uh, burned off, you know that it's deflationary overall. Uh, however, the issue that we deal with is the fact that it looks more inflationary because of the supply that can be added. So once that supply either does get added or does get burned off, it is truly deflationary by nature, which means that it will increase the price ceiling as time goes on, as long as we don't see that uh, supply just continue to get added there, which right now it stands that it will, 1 billion will be added per month. Um, even though the last couple of months, we've only seen about 1 billion that was added in the last three months. So it's kind of a little bit of a shock there. But the point is that I think that people are looking at this the wrong way. We could have some positivity, some major positivity that comes out of the case um, on the SEC side saying, hey, Ripple, you can't sell any more of this XRP and dilute the investors, which they will probably be one of the investors. I think they want in, but they don't want to uh, be at risk of being diluted by the company because they decided to get into this play. But if they understand what it's going to be worth and what it's going to be used for, it doesn't matter about that dilution. It just gives more and more strength to Ripple then. So maybe they don't want that. So I don't know. 
But uh, this is all an interesting uh, conversation that we can have, but it's all speculation on what they're going to do. The only way that we would know what they're going to do is if we were in those meetings that are happening behind closed doors, but we're not there. So guys, let me know what you think about this, right? Let me know what you think about the escrow. Let me know what you think about the SEC and what they're trying to do. And let me know what you think about Ripple and what they're trying to do in the end. Are they looking to just fund their um, their case? And then when that happens, are they looking to burn things off? Or what's the idea, what's the reasoning behind just continuing to offer these coins every single month, right? Guys, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell for more of these videos. Also, make sure you check out some of the links down below. It does help out the channel. And if you guys want to, um, you know, check out my Margex link, feel free to check that out. It's down there in the description. But I'm going to get out of here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.